Howdy folks. In my last video I said that I was going to do a video going over the edge thicknesses of many common production folding knives. And I had intended to do this video sooner but I kind of got sidetracked. Um, also in a previous video I showed a bunch of knife making materials that I had recently purchased and I've actually spent all summer making knives. So my next video will be sort of my progress so far and what I have made to date so stay tuned for that now back to the subject at hand my intention is for this video to be a resource I can't tell you how many times in the past I've been looking at buying a new knife and I start poking around the internet trying to find uh, what it cuts like you know how thin or thick the edges these are things I'm interested in and that information is generally not readily available so that's why I'm making this video to sort of help future buyers out there know what they're getting into now some of you might think you know who the hell cares about edge thickness but the edge thickness of a blade will generally give you a good idea of how well the knife will cut and what kind of durability you can expect now, I would recently gotten a request to do the edge thicknesses of every knife I own, but that would be a great undertaking and uh, really wouldn't provide information that was valuable because my collection goes back 20 years and most of my knives have been at least, you know, reprofiled and resharpened many times. A lot of them have been reground. So uh, the edge thickness as it stands right now uh, is vastly different from when I purchased it. So the measurements I'm going to list in this video are taken from brand new out-of-the-box knives with the stock factory sharpened edges. This way if you're interested in buying one of these blades you can get a general idea of what kind of performance you can expect you know dumbing it down thin edges cut better thick edges offer more durability. Now a few notes here. These are production knives so there will be some variation from blade to blade. Now on some models that you know I really like I've bought several of. So on those models I will have a a broader view of what you can expect and it'll be a little more accurately because I've measured it on more samples. Now another thing that is uh, when you're taking measurements or, or doing testing you need to pick one method and stick to it and I realize this but because of different grinds and blade shapes uh, this can greatly affect the edge thickness on just one single knife. So what I'm going to do for most of the knives is I I'm taking the average of several measurements taken along the length of the edge. On the other blades, I'm going to take the average of the majority of the edge, which would give you the best representation of, you know, their cutting performance. Uh, additionally, I'm going to do my measurements in millimeters, as my calipers offer higher resolution in millimeters. It goes down to 0 .01 millimeters, which is one one hundredth of a millimeter. Uh, the accuracy is 0 .03 millimeters. So uh, when I do averaging and stuff, I'm sort of taking that into account so I don't get just some, you know, meaningless digits that, you know, may or may not be accurate. Um, if you want the measurement in inches, just take my measurement and divide it by 25.4. And, you know, that'll give you your uh, sort of standard inch figure. So let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to start out with Kershaw. Uh, Kershaw trimmer. Um, I've measured several of these. The plain edge versions generally come in between 0 0.3 millimeters and 0 0.35 millimeters. I've got one specimen here to show you. Uh, this one is right at 0 0.3 millimeters. Let's see if I can get a piece of paper so I can show you how thin this thing is ground. This thing cuts like a dream. 
Now, saying that, this is not a knife you'd want to baton with. You would blow out that primary grind probably on your first whack. I don't know if I can focus in that well on the uh, edge, but uh, it's incredibly thin. It cuts extremely well, sharpens easy. And uh, th this is pretty common across the board for the trimmers. Um, they're ground thin and they cut well. Now for the uh, combo edged version of the trimmers, it's a little bit thicker. The actual straight edged portion of that combo edge, you're going to be looking at between 0 0.40 and 0 0.45 millimeters. Now the Kershaw 1 ton is next on the list. That is at 0 0.65 millimeters. Uh, Kershaw Compound, 0 0.4 millimeters. Kershaw Clash. This is another one I want to note because the Clash, at least mine, consistently come in at 0 0.30 millimeters. Here's one here to show you. This has been reprofiled on the Wicked Edge, so it is a little bit thicker. But again, maybe I should bring the paper back. It is ground extremely thin. Cuts very, very well. And this is something that uh, is generally common with Kershaw's. They are generally ground pretty thin, especially the overseas made versions for some reason. Can't tell you why. Uh, but moving on, Kershaw Nerve. Uh, th this is one that is a little bit odd. Um, I have one nerve that came in at 0 0.3 millimeters, and I had another nerve that came in at 0 0.7 millimeters. So there, there is a little bit of a difference you know between knives um, the Kershaw Brawler uh, 0 0.4 millimeters for the straight edge portion this is a Tonto and the Tonto tip as at 1.2 millimeters uh, Kershaw Volt 2 uh, it's 0 0.5 millimeters Kershaw Cryo 0 0.4 millimeters uh, Kershaw JYD 2.2 0 0.5 millimeters and the Kershaw Blur Tonto. Um, I've got one that is 0 0.5 millimeters behind the edge, and I've got one that is at 0 0.35 millimeters behind the edge. So again, there is a little bit of difference, a little bit of variation uh, between specimens. Now, also, I want to note this before I get too far ahead. Um, I'm going to put all of these uh, measurements uh, in the details for this video so you don't have to watch through the whole video if you're just you know looking for a reference for edge thickness and also have some instructions at the end of the video how you can help make this uh, this log of uh, blades better so now on to cold steel <clears throat> cold steel recon one is at 0 0.5 millimeters and this is one that I actually wanted to show because when I said I was taking um, the averages of the entire edge and averages of the uh, majority of the edge, this is one specimen that, that really uh, sort of shows why. Now, if you look, the majority of the edge is consistently the same you know, width. But then as it gets towards the tip, you see the bevel widening. The bevel's widening because the edge is thickening. You know, if I average that in with the rest of the, the edge, you know, this would sort of blow that out of proportion and it wouldn't really give you a good representation of how well this knife cuts. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So that is at 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, the Kershaw Void, I mean, God, the Cold Steel uh, Medium Voyager, 0 0.26 millimeters. Uh, the Large Voyager, I've got a couple of them, and they range between uh, 0 0.55 and 0 0.65 millimeters. Um, the Voyager XL, uh, both of mine, it's consistent 0 0.40 millimeter average. The Cold Steel Pocket Bushman is at 0 0.6 millimeters. The Rajah 3 is at 0 0.5 millimeters. And the Cold Steel Kudu is at 1.0 millimeters. And the blade on that is only like 2 mil thick, so it's a very thick edge for how thin the blade is. Moving on to Open L. Uh, if you've never had an Open L, get one. You're in for a treat. 
Um, they are ground very, very thin. In fact, this is my open on number eight. <clears throat> and from the factory, the edge thickness on this was 0 0.05 millimeters. That's five one hundredths of a millimeter. Essentially, it was a full zero ground convex <clears throat> and just had a micro bevel on it. And this has since been reprofiled twice, and still the bevel on that is ridiculously narrow. And this was reprofiled on the wicked edge, so it does take off a, a little bit of material, but we're still at a very, very thin edge. So that's the number eight. The open L number 10, <clears throat> mine comes in at 0 0.14 millimeters. Now on the Spyderco, uh, the Tenacious is at 0 0.6 millimeters. Uh, the Manix 2 XLs I've got are the Sprint Runs S90V, and mine come in at 0 0.68 millimeters for the average, and it, that's a blade where it generally thickens as it gets towards the tip, and the tips are generally around 0 0.8 millimeters. The Bird Kara Kara 2 and G10 is at 1.0 millimeters behind the edge, so it doesn't cut well. It's extremely thick behind the edge. I noted that in a couple of previous videos. Now on to Ontario. Um, first we'll do the Utilitac 2. Mine is the basically recurved plain edge version and that is at 0 0.6 millimeters. Next we have the Rat 1. I have measured a lot of Rat 1s. Generally with the Rat 1s you're looking at a range between 0 0.35 and 0 0.45 millimeters. This one is special. When I got this one, this one from the factory was at 0 0.2 millimeters. It cut like a dream. This has since been reprofiled twice and sharpened, you know, several times in between. And we're still left with a very narrow bevel. You know, uh, I really wish all rat ones came like this, but uh, this knife has definitely been a treat because it's so thin and cuts so well. Next on the Shrade, uh, the Shrade SCH302, which you've seen in a previous video of mine, that one is at 1.05 millimeters behind the edge. And now the Shrade CH7. I've had this knife probably 17 years, and I didn't, of course, measure it when I first got it. It's been sharpened many times over the years, but I recently measured it. Uh, before I sharpened on the wicked edge and even then the edge was at 0 0.2 millimeters So that means that when this thing was from the factory. It was a good bit below 0 0.2 millimeters uh, It definitely definitely cuts well. I can tell you that and the bevel is still Very narrow that's a 30 degree inclusive bevel and as you see the blade shapes a little bit weird because it's been sharpened so many times But uh, you know, I wish they still made these of course, the USA versions, but they don't. Now, for the last knife on my list that I've actually bothered to measure new out of box is this Normark fillet knife. I've got to say, this is probably the thinnest ground blade that I've ever purchased in, in 20 years. Uh, I did recently reprofile it on the Wicked Edge because it needed some sharpening, but before that, with the stock factory edge, this one came in at 0 0.04 millimeters. And that this is uh, below 30 degrees inclusive. But it is ground extremely thin. And it's also very thin stock. So it cuts very well. And my memory card's full, so I guess I'm going to have to edit this video. Now, I've only got a couple more measurements to add to the list, and that is for the Victorinox Swiss Army knives, the large models. It really doesn't matter what, you know, the, the Tinkers, the Swiss Champs, the Champion Pluses, they all use the same large and small blade. The large blade is 0 0.3 millimeters behind the edge, and the small blade is also 0 0.3 millimeters behind the edge. So for now, that's all I've got. Those are all the knives that I'd bothered to measure when they were brand new out of the box with their stock factory sharpened edges. 
Now, I would like to enlarge this list, and that's where I'm asking for help from the knife community. If you have a set of calipers and you commonly measure the edge thicknesses on knives, what you can do is you can leave a comment below and you can leave the you know the the maker, the model number or model name and the edge thickness. Try to do an average, you know, take several measurements and then sort of average them so you can get an average of the thickness along the length of the edge. And what I will do is I will sporadically read the comments. I will take your measurements and I will add them to the list that I'm going to make in the description for this video. Now, as I said before, I want this to be a reference for the knife cutlery edge community. I want it to be taken seriously. I realize that when you do measurements, there will always be a little bit of error here and there. But I really want to make this as accurate as possible. So please, don't be putting numbers down there if you have no way of measuring them. If you've got a set of calipers, fine, you can do it. But don't just be looking at edges and eyeballing you know how thick it is don't be looking at a ruler and trying to guesstimate how thick your edge is based on the ruler I really I want these measurements measurements to be as accurate and precise as possible and for this reference to be helpful to my knife community and give people a a general representation of you know what kind of performance you can expect from knives so that's all for now Stay tuned for my next video where I will be showing sort of my progress in making knives. And thanks for watching. So I'll see you guys soon.